Okay. Since it's so dark in here, I didn't want to have you try to read program notes. I'm going to kind of yak about all the music, if you don't mind. Uh, by the way, you know that this is the only day of the year that's a command? March 4th. <laughs> it's kind of appropriate for my last concert at USC, I think. Uh, I'm best known for being a tuba player and a teacher, but in recent years, composition has become an important part of my uh, musical life. A famous conductor recent, recently told an audience, conducting a piece of mine, that Jim Self never wrote an easy piece of music. <laughs> well, the works tonight are among the most challenging. It's a concert of one composer's music is pretty rare, but I hope you will not be too bored with it. It's, 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 none of it's quite the same, I promise you that. To me, music is a communal experience. The players, the conductor, the composer, and the audience are all participants. When I compose, I always think of writing music for, for the players and for the listeners. I always think of, uh, I try to make it fun and interesting for both. Uh, my stuff is often different, quirky, without being aleatoric, uh, usually tonal and mo or modal. I love odd meters and hemiola, uh, and rhythm drives everything I write, everything. Over the years, I've composed many chamber works for our own students. Tonight's concert features our tuba class, which is especially strong this year. Each of the members is featured in a lead or difficult role. We're joined by many other brass students. You heard some trumpets and trombones and horns, and even the string quartet later and a, a piano, of course. Uh, we opened a concert with Polarities, which is a piece I wrote and recorded with the uh, with the with the uh, my colleagues in the Pacific Symphony with Doug Tornquist on the other tuba, me and, and Doug as the tuba players. And, and uh, it's very contrapuntal, as you can tell. The trombones are answering each other, the first trumpets are answering each other, the tuba, so on. Uh, it, it's recorded, uh, it's the opening piece on my Flying Circus CD, which is a whole album of my, uh, of my uh, uh, brass quintets. I wrote eight great brass quintets. And uh, I didn't start composing until I was almost 50 years old. I was, didn't think I was smart enough. <laughs> and once I got started, I kind of took off, and uh, I've got about 100 pieces. Anyway, uh, uh, several years ago, Robert Reynolds, who was the band director here for quite a few years, an icon of the, of the band world, uh, opened a concert, a Thornton Wynn concert, Wynn Ensemble concert here, with polarities. And the two, two, the two quintets you just heard were coached by uh, Doug Tornquist, my colleague. He teaches a lot of chamber music around here. Uh, next piece on the program is called Tailspins. If I like a certain piece, I often do variations, various, various arrangements of it. This piece started out, believe it or not, as for flute, violin, viol, and tuba. Then morphed into a string quartet, later a saxophone quartet, and I've just completed a new CD of my of original composition but called Tour de Force, the brass music of Jim Self with the River City Brass Band of Pittsburgh. And when you hear this, it's all original stuff I wrote and it's pretty impressive. Tonight is, is the first, it's the world premiere, of live premiere of this piece. And uh, it's, 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 it's for, it's, it's just a conical bore version, I call it. You'll notice it's cornet, flugelhorn, euphonium, and tuba, all all part of the tuba family, really. And when I work with these guys on jobs, the flugelhorn players and stuff like that, I tell them that they're in my section, I'm the principal. <laughs> uh, now you can tell by now that my titles are often punny or related to things in my life, like flying, as this piece is. I say in fun that my titles are way better than my music. So let's listen to uh, Tailspins. Thank you. 
several pieces, uh, what time is some of my albums, even my latest jazz album is, uh, is, uh, is, is called uh, Touch and Go, which is another pilot term. Anyway, the next piece on the concert is called Poker Chips. Now, it's one of my most played pieces, though. it's been played all over the world, it's for four bass tubas and vibraphone. It was recorded on my big script album with me on the first tuba, Norm Pearson, who happens to be here, and Fred Green, and Gene Pocorni was the fourth tuba player on that. Pretty good group of people, I think. And, uh, and uh, it's with vibraphone also. Tuba, four tubas and vibraphone. Norm and Fred, by the way, are here tonight. It's really cool to have them here. Yeah, yeah. You know Norm was my uh, first student when I first came to Los Angeles, and, uh, and uh, he went to school here, and then he eventually uh, got into LA Philharmonic. I think he did pretty good. He's now retired, but uh, he's too young to retire, but uh, I'm so happy to have him here. And uh, the next piece, like I said, is called Poker Chips. There's some five short movements, all poker terms, Andy up in the first movement. The second movement is called Seven Card Stud. It's in seven, obviously, in the meeting. And uh, if you listen very carefully, you can hear a quote, the tuba solo from American in Paris. The doctor got pretty, pretty wildly, right guys? And uh, it's, uh, it's one of, it's, uh, and then the and the last movement is called uh, is called trips to win. It's in three, obviously, and there's there's improvised solos by uh, Preston on vibraphone and Arisa Nikita on euphonium. So that's yeah. I like to get some jazz in my stuff when I can. So uh, by the way, I'll tell you one little thing. Uh, th this piece. Uh, was, uh, it's, it's called Poker Chips. No, sorry, my, that's a story. There's another piece later in the concert called Polka.com. I'll tell you about that when we get to it. I get them mixed up sometimes. Okay, where's my music stand? My other music stand.
stretch out. Okay, the next piece is called Mixed Nuts. Another one of my crazy titles. Uh, this was written and premiered by tuba faculty recital that Doug Hornquist and Norman and I played a few years ago. And uh, it's with uh, three, three tubas and piano. And we're introducing our, our wonderful pianist, uh, Elizabeth Chow, who has been class pianist for a couple of years now, who is uh, playing a great recital coming up real soon. And uh, anyway, she's a, a big thing in this, in this group. So this is called Mixed Nuts. Oh, the first tuba on this is our youngest tuba player, Alan Liu. So come on up, Alan. Thank you. 
on the first half here. There's another one of my more popular works. Uh, this is called Winks and Jinx. Another fun, fun title. And uh, it was written for Norm Pearson. He's here again tonight. And his four trombone colleagues of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. It's a very challenging tuba solo and, and with four trombones. And uh, Terry Craven's wonderful trombones are going to be playing. They have Kudva, our tuba soloist tonight. <laughs> After this, we'll have a short intermission. Okay? Thank <laughs> you. 
the American premier, the piece called Splitting Air, is another one of my funny titles. The three movements are uh, uh, Split Image, Split Second, and Lickety Split. Lickety Split, I want you to put seatbelts on, okay? <laughs> I, need, I need one too. Uh, this was written for Sergio Carolino, who is uh, uh, a very wonderful, probably maybe one of the world's greatest tuba players of all time. He lives in Portugal. And he did, a, he did a recital right here in this hall, which I'll tell you about in a second. But anyway, I wrote it a few years ago, and he was having trouble getting the right people together to record it. But it's going to be recorded this, this fall, so he will get the world premiere of it, if you will. So, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, this is for solo tuba and solo euphonium. And our, our own virtuosos here are uh, Teresa Makita on euphonium and Derek Zimmerman <laughs> on tuba. <laughs> and the Thornton String Quartet, which is very unusual. <laughs> and uh, and uh, our always wonderful class pianist, Elizabeth Chow. Oh, yeah. I've told you the three movements already. The second movement, the first one is just kind of pretty and ethereal. Uh, the second one is, uh, is called Split Second. And it, I call it my, uh, my uh, Paco Bell Canon. The reason I do is because the same four bars repeat over and over and over, with each time having a different combination of soloists, string quartet, piano, and different rhythms and even rolls. So to me, that's, uh, uh, again, the kind of thing I like to do. But it, it, I don't think it's boring because it just keeps repeating, but it, it's really different every four bars. So my playing career, by the way, has uh, covered so many musical styles when I hear something cool, I may insert it in my music, in disguise or in overt quotes, all in fun. And uh, I've worked with some of the greatest musicians in the world, John Williams, and I've done things at the LA Opera, and I steal from the best, believe me, I steal from <laughs> the best. Uh, I happened to be right, uh, when I was writing Splitting Airs, I was playing the ring cycle of, uh, with uh, LA Opera, James Conlon, and so when you hear snippets of God of Donnerong in here, don't get upset. I steal from the best, I said. Okay. This is a uh, Mickey split as well. Split, hey, splitting here.
Okay, um, I'll get the rest of the conducting for a couple pieces. And um, the next piece is originally written for a brass quintet. And it is recorded on my Flying Circus album by Norm Pearson's quintet. And uh, uh, later on, I just got the idea of taking this piece and making a solo tuba piece on it. It's, uh, it's called Polka.com, and I wrote it about the time that dot-coms were coming in. And uh, uh, I took all the important parts, the trumpet parts and the trombone and the tuba parts, and I sort of put all the melodic notes into the tuba part, and I recorded them on my uh, Big Stretch album. And uh, tonight we're going to have uh, Patrick Z Zhang, our senior, who's graduating in a couple months, uh, is the virtuoso soloist on this. It's for solo tuba. And it's, uh, it's, the range is nearly four octaves. So this is a really a, a, a challenging piece. And uh, uh, I describe this piece as Frankie Yankovic, the polka king, meets Donna Summer, the disco queen, meets Scott Joplin, the ragtime. Okay. 
So if you can imagine all three of those kinds of grooves all fitting together in one piece, that's what polka dot com is. <laughs> now, uh, I wrote this in the 90s when dot coms came in. A short time later, I tried to get a URL of www.polka.com. It was already owned by another person. We wanted $10,000 for it. <laughs> That's the good old capitalist American way, though, right? Well, I didn't buy it, so I never got it. But anyway, bring up uh, Patrick now, and he's going to do, uh, he's going to do polka.com. first tuba part or in a solo role like, like he is tonight. And uh, uh, the next piece on the, on the program is called Tongue in Cheek. My titles are way better than my music, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, this was co com composed and premiered by another USC doctoral the DMA grad, Dave Holman, who's in the room tonight. Hello, Dave, are you here somewhere? I don't know, I saw you earlier. Are you? Right, oh, right in front of me. Oh yeah, cool. Anyway, Dave is a wonderful tuba player, and he wanted a piece that can be played on F tuba or, or um, chimbasa. And he premiered it uh, down at Cal State Fullerton, I believe, on uh, where he teaches at uh, uh, on, on chimbasa, and 
Tonight, Logan Westerfeller, our uh, master student, wanted to play it on Chimbasa. So he just picked the instrument. It's one of my horns that I let him use. And if you don't know about the Chimbasa, it's, uh, it's a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, it's not, it's, it's somewhere between a tuba and a trombone, I guess, but, but it's so, it, by the way, this is the instrument we use in the opera. I, I play Chimbasa in the Elian Opera. And uh, it's, it's very, uh, all of 19th century uh, Italian opera used chimbasso instead of a tuba. Later on, they started using tubas in this, in this century, or the 20th century, but they didn't even, this was the base instrument of the opera. And uh, Doug, Doug Tornquist is gonna be playing it in, at the LA Opera for me next, next month on uh, La Traviata. And then in the next month, I wanted to go back and play uh, Trovator, uh, Turandot by Puccini on Chimbasso. So anyway, this is Logan, and he's going to play, play. Uh, what's it called? Oh, oh before I, I want to say one, <laughs> one more thing about this. Uh, uh, the title means everything, kind of. As the title, it's full of tuba excerpt quotes and corny quotes, like the Woody put Woodpecker theme. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I, like I said, the very first tonight, if it isn't fun for the listener and for the player, get somebody else to write the music. Because <laughs> anyway, go do it, man.
other pieces all for men. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> These things just jump in my head when I'm writing. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm smoking pot or something. I don't know. <laughs> not, not me. Anyway, uh, uh, when I got out of the Army Band in Washington, D.C., I, 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 I subbed a little bit with the National Symphony, a children's concert. And one day I went out on a gig. It was three of them, two in the morning, one in the afternoon. And John Marcellus, the principal trombone, he leans over to me. He says, oh, we, the, we have to go out front and demonstrate our instruments. You have to play a song. Well, I was scared to death because I didn't have anything memorized. I didn't, couldn't play anything from memory. So just luckily, I go out and I play the old gray mare. And he comes out, <laughs> plays, he comes out right behind me and so, no, he was in front of me. I was the last of the four brass instruments. And so that's happened on the second concert. The third concert, I come out. He comes out in front of me and plays the old gray mare. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so I, luckily, I just went, butter da dee da, butter da dee da, ba ba da dee da, ba da da, and I didn't miss a note. <laughs> and I still don't remember how I did it, but every time I meet John, John was a, was a trombone professor at Eastman for many years, and he and I are close friends, and he, he never, stops uh, reminding me of that fun time we had. He set me up, you know. <laughs> be careful, guys, when you go up and you sub with a, something like that. There's always going to be somebody who wants to set you up, especially if you're young. <laughs> okay. Now, the next piece on the concert, uh, my faculty tuba colleague, Doug Tornquist, is going to play Frivolities. If you been, say that real fast, it means Frivolities. Frivolities. Again, a play on words. It's two movements, challenging, uh, modal ITs, and complex ITs. <laughs> it was commissioned by Sergio Carolino and premiered a few years ago by him right here in this room. And uh, this is also being recorded this year by Sergio in, in Portugal. And uh, uh, Doug is one of the best tuba players in the world, period. One of the best in the whole world. He studied here at USC with Tommy Johnson and me and returned to do his doctorate, his DMA. And then later he joined Norm and me and Tommy on the faculty. Doug is the top tuba player in the Hollywood studios and he honors me by playing his music. So for volunteers, Doug Hornquist. <laughs> Thank 
pieces ever written, I think, and the guy who wrote it for Sergio in, in Portugal, and he, he's, uh, he's that kind of a player. He, I, anything I write for him, he can play. And I never realized how hard it is, but th this, by the way, you might notice some, some jazzy stuff in this, and it's, uh, we need to read this down. Uh, uh, Anyway, of all the pieces I wrote tonight, just the first movement is kind of a jazz waltz in three, in five, rather. Boom, cheek, boom, cheek, boom, cheek. Sort of like uh, take five, you know, uh, blue bag. Anyway, uh, on my f my last album, a couple albums ago called Hanging Out, John Cialdini and I did a guitar version of Tuba's guitar, and I wrote a little improvisational thing for him to play on. Some really nice chord changes. You may have heard those changes in the middle of the piece. Anyway, um, um, I mean, I, 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 Logan, you played, I told you, you played this recital for memory. Well, one of the great memories I have is when Doug was doing his doctor's degree here, he played a, his, uh, one, of his, one of his four recitals. He played the John Williams, the Bond Williams, the Hindemith and a couple other pieces, all for a memory. And it just blew me away. And at that point, I knew this guy had something else. And I, I've been uh, trying to be a, somewhat of a champion to him in the business. He's been my sub for a long time in a lot of the jobs. And, uh, and it's a great honor to work here with him. OK, the last piece of the concert is, uh, is called uh, I get my pages up right here. Okay, where is it? Oh yeah. We end the concert with the, the Shadow Neighbors. This is for six tubas and drums. And uh, it was written for and recorded by the USC tuba, master tuba class several years ago. And uh, Tonight, we have a whole class here, but we also have Lee Wilson on drums. And uh, uh, Brad Mahler, who was 
but it's got this degree here last year. We came back to play the first two record on this, which is challenging, and uh, uh, we're glad to have him here. Again, keeping my idea of uh, crazy titles, Shatter Nose, you know what it means? Anybody know what it means? I wrote it on Groundhog Day. Figure it out, okay? <laughs>
Okay, that's all, folks. <laughs> Thanks for sharing this uh, special evening swan song concert with me and our talented students. I'm especially honored to have my bosses, the Dean King was here earlier, Sharon Lavery, she's the chairman of our department, and my former boss, Terry Craven, is here. He was chairman of our department for many, many years. So thanks for you guys for keeping me on all these years as a tuba teacher here. And uh, I've, uh, I came here to start my doctor's degree in 1971. I've been here ever since. And as soon as I finished it in 76, they hired me as a tuba teacher for Tommy Johnson. Most of my life has been in this room, right in this room. And, uh, it, and it's, it's all because this is a world-class music school. The place to get, I got the second doctorate in tuba in the world because it was new at that time in the 70s. Uh, while I'm ending my tenure here, I, I will always be around, always be around and, and active with this tuba class. I, uh, it means a lot to me. So we've got a few goodies up here, some, some brownies that Jamie made and some cupcakes and things. So please hang around and chat for a few minutes, everybody. And thank you. You've made my life in a way tonight. This is one of the big moments of my whole life. Thank you. Please come up here, and Elizabeth and uh, Arisa, come on, that's, that's our precious class right here. You can hang around and leave for a second, okay? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is the group we've been working with this year, Doug and I, and uh, it's been a best, one of the best classes we've ever had, and I'm telling you, we've had some great classes here. Starting when I first came here, Gene Bocorny was here. He went on to the Chicago Symphony, and then Norm Pearson and all these other great players. A bunch of you guys are right here in the room. And uh, anyway, uh, get some cookies, whatever's up. There. <laughs>